All right, so we've got our alternating series test and our way for working with the remainders of an alternating series. Let's go ahead and try our new tools out. And so in this example, we're going to approximate the partial sum of our alternating harmonic series using S sub nine, so the sum of the first nine terms. After that, we're gonna find an upper bound for the error in our approximation using our remainder and alternating series theorem or test. And then we'll, after that, we'll figure out how many terms are we gonna need in our partial sum so that our partial sum is accurate to three decimal places or one one thousandth. And so the first part of this problem, that's pretty straightforward. We're just trying to approximate the sum of our series, right? We saw this earlier, this is our alternating harmonic series, and we know by the alternating series test that it is going to converge. So it's worth trying to approximate the sum of the series. We're gonna take the sum of the first nine terms to do so. So that'll look like one, if we plug in n equals one, if we plug in n equals two, we'll get negative one half, plug in n equals three, we get positive one third and so on. Our last couple terms are gonna be negative one fourth, plus one fifth, minus one sixth, plus one seventh, minus one eighth, and plus one ninth to finish off this partial sum. And if we add all these uh, numbers together using a calculator, we get a decimal around 0 0.7456. And so that finishes off the first part of this example. The second part is asking us to find an upper bound for the error in our approximation. And well, by our remainders and alternating series test kind of theorem here, we know that our error is always gonna be less than the next term or the n plus first term. So that b sub n plus one is gonna be the upper bound for our error when approximating using a partial sum. And so using our remainder and alternating series theorem up here, we know that our remainder, which is our error in using the ninth partial sum is gonna be less than that n plus first term where n is equal to nine. So it's gonna be less than or equal to our 10th term in our series. And well, our 10th term is gonna be uh, one over 10. All right, remember the b sub n's are just representing the actual term in our series, ignoring the powers of negative one or the alternation. So those are always positive here. And so we know that the approximation we used here is gonna be accurate to 0 0.1 or about one decimal place. So we know it's gonna be between like 0.6 and 0.8 essentially. All right, so with the first two parts of our example done, we can see so far that our, uh, our estimation here is off by at most one-tenth. But what if we wanted to be more accurate than that? How many terms will we need to add up to guarantee that our approximation is off by at most one one-thousandth? And that's what we're figuring out in the third part of this example. How many terms are needed so that our approximation using a partial sum is accurate to one one-thousandth or about three decimal places? And for that, we are again using our result for remainders and alternating series. We know that our error is always gonna be less than the n plus first term. And so we know that the error is always less than the n plus first term. And here our n plus first term, ignoring the alternating part, is gonna look like one over n plus one. Just take the formula for the terms in our series here and replace each n with n plus one to find that out. So this is what our n plus first term looks like. And as long as we make that less than or equal to one one thousandth, we'll guarantee that our error is within one one thousandth. So now we just have to essentially solve this inequality. When is one over n plus one less than or equal to one over one thousand? And well, we can do some cross multiplication, just some basic algebra with this inequality to first off see that n plus one will have to be greater than or equal to 1,000 in order for this to occur. We're just kind of cross multiplying there to see that. And then if we subtract one from each side, we see that n must be greater than or equal to 999. And so our current approximation using the sum of the first nine terms is about 0 0.7456. If we need our approximation for sure to be more accurate to the nearest one 1,000th, then we'd have to add on 990 more terms or look at the partial sum of the 999 first terms of this series. But don't worry, we're not gonna add all those terms up in this video. And it won't be until later on in this class, but in a future video, we will actually talk about how to find the exact value of the series or the exact sum of the series. And it ends up being a really nice number. Well, it's still an irrational number, but it ends up being equal to exactly the natural log of two.